Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to have John Delaney, the representative from Maryland, who announced he was running for president um, some 900 days before the primary, and versus um, the incumbent vice president, Mike Pence. So this would be like a what-if scenario, as if um, Donald Trump was resigned, impeached, or um, uh, what's it called? Um, he becomes the next president. Let's just say any situation happens. I'm I'm hesitant to say it, so I'm not going to say it at all. But, um, so yeah, so we have John Delaney, the representative, versus Mike Pence. So John Delaney, not well known. Mike Pence is extremely well known, um, really amongst Republicans and Democrats. John Delaney was a name that, when I told people about him, they said, who? So he won't have the name recognition the same way Mike Pence will, the same way Donald Trump did in the primaries. So I don't think that'll help him, um... Both of these candidates, I don't think, will win their respective primaries per each party, but um, anything can happen. So, of course, the um, the West Coast would go to John Delaney. Um, let's just go through all the safe Pence states. Remember, this is the year 2020, so a lot of changing demographics, but you do need a minority candidate in order to appeal to them, or someone who's worked with a minority administration, such as the Obama administration, very closely, or you need someone who inspires new voters to come out and vote, when showing that only 24, um, I'm pretty sure it was 19% of 17 to 24 year olds who came out to vote. So um, 17 meaning they turned 18 by election day, but just in that age group turning out to vote in um, the general election, so I guess 18 to 24 technically speaking, but that's just such a low number. It needs to be a lot higher, and if there's a candidate who can bring out young voters better than past Democratic candidates have, um, they may be able to flip states that you would normally need a minority candidate to do. So Illinois would definitely be safe. Um, New Mexico, I'm going to keep that one safe. Um, Colorado is a toss-up. Arizona is a toss-up. Nevada is a toss-up. Um, Alaska is safe red. Hawaii is safe blue. Minnesota is safe blue because I think John Delaney can appeal to the white working class better there. But we're going to talk about the Rust Belt because um, obviously they voted differently than Minnesota did in the 2016 presidential election. Um, in Iowa, I think that one would be safe red just because of how big Donald Trump won it. I think that he may lose some voters with the Pence being on um, the top of the ticket this time, but I don't think it'll be enough to flip the state out of the state of Georgia. That one will be a toss-up. Florida will be a toss-up. Um, North Carolina will be a toss-up. Virginia, I think that one will be blue, depending on who John Delaney's VP is. Um, it'll likely be someone who can appeal to the white working class and suburban voters. So I'm going to, and John Delaney can do that himself, so I'm going to give him Virginia. His home state of Maryland, of course, would go to him. D.C., Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, oops, I'm sorry, um, Vermont, Maine. I'm going to give one electoral vote to Mike, actually, I'll leave one electoral vote as a toss-up because this, there is no Trump effect with Mike Pence. Um, and then New Hampshire will be a toss-up, and Ohio will be a toss-up. Actually, Ohio, I think, will go to Mike Pence. I'm sorry about my voice. It's just I'm extremely congested. And I'm leaving for the United States tonight in about two hours. So I'm going to be on the plane for six hours and then a two-hour layover and then another 14-hour flight back to the United States. And then I'm home. So um, this is going to be my last video for two days. So we have John Delaney, 213, to Mike Pence's 188. Um, the reason why I gave him Ohio is because of the fact that Trump won it by such a large margin. I don't really see it flipping, um, especially if, I only see it flipping if John Delaney picks someone like, um, who could turn out African American voters as a VP, but he'll lose other states if he does that, so it's a lose-lose situation for him, especially since there's not a strong candidate at the top for the Democrats. In the state of Arizona and Georgia, um, I don't see them flipping unless there's a minority candidate, plus you would have to have a Latino candidate for Arizona and an African-American one for Georgia, um, and it would take a lot of time to get there, so 213 to 215. Um, hmm. Out of the state of Colorado, I think that one would go to John Delaney, just because of the fact that the suburban voters would land him a victory there, but I don't think it'll be, um, I think it'll be extremely close, but I think he'll take the state. Um, Nevada, that one's trending a little more Republican, considering Trump doing better than we thought he would do in Nevada, but I'm still conflicted about that one. Um, North Carolina, I don't really see that one flipping. 
Um, Florida, I don't see it flipping either, just because of the fact that Trump won it by over 100,000 votes. And I don't think that John Delaney can really appeal to those um, members of the social, the people that are on Social Security. And I don't think he'll be able to appeal the same way Mike Pence can. And Mike Pence is an amazing talker. Senior citizens will not vote for John Delaney, um, in my opinion, out of the state of New Hampshire. That one's going to be close. But I think Pence may pull off a victory against John Delaney. So that puts him at 263 to 222. Um, out of Maine's um, second congressional district. I think that one will go to Mike Pence. But if we're looking at this map now, um, I would give Mike Pence Pennsylvania. But right now, he's at 264. So if we give him Pennsylvania, of course he becomes the next president. If you give him any of the states in yellow. But Pennsylvania would go to him because of the fact that Trump won it by such a large margin. Large compared to where... He was expected to get. He had a 22% chance of winning the state, and um, by the end of the night, it was 99%. So, actually, the end of the next day. Um, I think that Donald Trump would, I mean, Mike, well, the way Donald Trump won the state is the same way Mike Pence will. I think that a lot of the states that were deemed safe Democrat or safe Republican um, in 2004 changed for Obama. They said that they would never go there again, and they stayed that way. Like, um, Virginia was never safe Democrat under the Bush era, not even for Bill Clinton, but it did go to a Democrat three times in a row, even though the majority of the country did not. So it's trending more Democratic. The Rust Belt is also trending more Republican. Democrats need a good candidate to flip back the Rust Belt. They need someone who can um, work on the economic message rather than I'm not Trump, vote for me. Um, Michigan, I would give that one to Mike Pence, and I think Wisconsin, Mike Pence can even expand on where Donald Trump did in 2016. So it's all a matter of good politicking and putting out good political ads and painting John Delaney as someone who doesn't care about the American people. I mean, John Delaney is extremely wealthy, so they could definitely attack him for that. But even though Donald Trump was, it was more of an, a business, businessman way, like a Shark Tank type guy. John Delaney is rich because of where he is in um, office. And Nevada, I think the Latino vote will carry John Delaney to... Um, carry the state by a slim margin, but I, I think it'll be close. So this is my final map, 228 for John Delaney and 310 for Mike Pence. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.